guys? Welcome back to Four Corners of the Galley. I'm your host, P. Bo, and you're continuing me on this journey, our journey of Mission Impossible. As you can see, I have my board back here again. I don't know if you checked out my other ones, but I do have uh, Mission Impossible 1, 2, and 3, all in one big complete thing. Click on here. You can check it out. I also have Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol on its own separate one. You can click here and check that out. And today, I'm giving you Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. All right, so as you can see, we got our board here. Uh, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation came back in 2015 after the great success of Ghost Protocol, and they continued on. And with the theme of all the other ones, we got a brand new director. Christopher McQuarrie has joined Mr. Tom Cruise on this adventure this time. Uh, Christopher McQuarrie has actually already worked with Tom. He uh, wrote 2012 and also uh, 2012 and also directed it. Jack Reacher, uh, which was uh, it was pretty good, and then he wrote uh, Edge of Tomorrow or uh, Live Die Repeat, which was in 2014, which I loved. It's a great sci-fi movie. Go see it if you haven't seen it. Did not get a lot of good buzz, but this movie is amazing. So he's joined it. Uh, we got Ethan back, of course. Uh, Mr. Simon Pegg is back as Benji. We got uh, Jeremy Reiner back as Brant. We got Mr. Uh, Vin Rames back as Luther. We get a brand new mysterious person, and Elsie played by Rebecca Ferguson. We'll learn more about her. We also get the addition of Mr. Alec Baldwin as the new head of CIA, Alan Huey. And then we also get, I cannot remember this gentleman, I feel horrible bad now, and he's the villain, Lane. <laughs> so, we're going to kick it off into a little recap of some of the fun that we've been having with these Mission Impossibles. And then we're going to get into the breakdown of the whole entire Rogue Nation. So let's kick it to this little fun stuff. enjoyed our little fun exciting stuff that we like to throw in there just give you a little recap of all the previous mission possibles plus a little fun you know the man can run he can also do some tricks and in uh in this one in the rogue nation breakdown he gets it all going on all at once so uh let's get into this recap breakdown all right so we catch up with ethan and uh after ghost protocol they've all imf has been reinstalled again and so imf is back up and running so we catch uh imf and his team in the middle of a mission and uh, Benji's back. He's in the field, and he, right now he's working on how to try to stop a plane. Uh, Brant's back. Brant, Brand is back at home base, and uh, he's quarterbacking the whole mission, making sure everything's going right. Uh, Luther is also there, but he's helping from Singapore. He's actually not supposed to be a part of it, but Brand says, he goes, I'm helping from Singapore. Benji needs some help. And then you're all wondering where Ethan comes, and out of nowhere, like some classic Ethan Hunt style, Ethan comes running out and jumps on the plane, and we kick off into a brand new Mission Impossible with our first crazy big stun. And uh, there we go. You got Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt hanging off the plane, <laughs> trying to get inside. Uh, Benji's trying to figure out a way to get him in. They, You know, they eventually he gets inside, and they're trying to stop basically this cargo on there and on that actual uh, cargo freight plane was uh, some missiles and the uh, you know so Ethan gets on there and of course Ethan being Ethan ends up strapping himself down to the missiles and hitting the freaking parachute and flying out the back of the freaking uh, cargo jet and bam mission impossible the other thing I also wanted to bring up I don't know if you guys ever noticed but if you do when you get to the title sequence when mission impossible they show you the whole movie they can show you what's going to happen they don't show you every single nugget but they basically give you a timeline on how this movie is going to work out and what you're going to see so that's always funny to me that if you pay attention right there you get a good glimpse of where the movie's going they don't show it all to you because they, they hide some stuff I remember JJ he purposely hit stuff, but they, they definitely show you some things. So after that, after the mission, uh, it actually uh, kicks over to um, two things. So Ethan, you catch up with Ethan, 
and uh, Ethan's back in England, or he's in England at this point, not back in England, but he's in England, and he rolls up to a record store, and uh, he's there to get his next mission. So he has starts having dialogue with the uh, the lady that's the the lady that runs the record store, who's actually kind of IMF agent who oversees everything. I uh, have a little banter. He goes inside, starts getting his information. He starts learning about the cargo jet that he was trying to stop and how basically it's all connected and that basically the uh, the, the voice on the message saying that the syndicate was behind us, the people that you've been tracking for a year. So you come to find out Ethan's been tracking some secret organization called the syndicate. And he goes, that's why, Ethan, that's why we cannot let you get out. And you come to find out that the syndicate's already infiltrated this old IMF uh, headquarters or little station and uh, the message is actually from the syndicate, and he basically tells you, we have you now, Ethan Hunt, and he's like, starts freaking out. He looks outside, and all of a sudden, he sees this shadowy figure he doesn't know with glasses and ends up shooting the girl and killing her, and then he ends up getting gassed, and you don't know what happens to him, and boom, it clicks out. So, bad things right off the back for Ethan, and it kicks over to even worse stuff, because now we catch up with Brant, and he's up, he's now there with brand new CIA Director Alan uh, Alan Hughes, no Alan H Hunley, Alan Hunley played by Alec Baldwin, and they're having a special council meeting for the IMF. Basically, that last mission we're on was so just completely chaos that a uh, special council doesn't feel IMF should be around anymore, and CIA director agrees with them. So they're trying to figure, they want to shut down IMF again, like always. You know, they got to shut down IMF or go ghost protocol or you know disavow them. They gotta. They got to make it difficult for them. They can't make it easy for them. You could never just give them IMF and let them be IMF the whole time. I don't think that's ever happened once. So what happens? You got Brant trying to, you know, he's trying to help, but he can't really say anything because the whole time he can't disclose things because he keeps saying that I cannot divulge any information without the secretary. But if you do remember, the secretary was killed in Ghost Protocol in that bomb, in that when he got shot to the head and then the van was blown up. So there is no secretary. So they're operating without a secretary, and the CIA director sees that also. Makes no difference. Special counsel shuts them down, and the IMF is dead. Of course. IMF is gone again. There we go. Back on to the Mission Impossible way. IMF is gone. So IMF is gone, and we catch back up with Ethan. And Ethan wakes up, and he's been caught. He's captured. And in walks this lady, and you have no idea who this lady is, and she starts playing with some vows, some uh, the little vows on the on the thing. And then out of nowhere walks in another gentleman, and they start speaking Swedish to each other. And uh, Ethan recognizes this guy, and he goes, "You're the Bone Doctor." And he goes, "But you're supposed to be dead." And he goes, "Obviously, I'm not." So you know they have this little back and forth, and uh, the lady that we find out is actually Rebecca Ferguson, who's Elsie, and she's there. And she's actually a double agent. She actually is British intelligence and works for MI6 and is deep within the syndicate trying to do the same thing Ethan's doing by taking down the syndicate. So she ends up helping Ethan right there and helps him escape. She throws him the keys, ends up kicking everybody's butt, knocking everybody out, and sends him on his way. And <laughs> during the middle of the whole fight, Ethan even goes, we've never met before, right? Because he doesn't know what the heck's going on. She's like, no. So he gets away, and she lets, she helps him escape. He ends up getting away, doing his whole little thing. He gets uh, you know, he gets on the phone, calls in, does his whole thing, and the phone gets sent over to Brant. Brant's like, look, man. He's like, look. Ethan's like, look, England's compromised. It's compromised. I need to get in. He's like, Brant's like, IMF is dead. Uh, we've been, <laughs> you know, it's over. The CIA is after us. You, you need to get away. And Ethan's just like, all right, we never had this conversation. I'm out. So, bam. Now you got Ethan on the run, man. Ethan's more on the run more than Jay Z and Beyonce, man. He, he, this should be what on the run six, on the run five. I mean, Ethan's always on the run. Jay and Beyonce need to need to watch out for him. Ethan be running more than he does, so <laughs> Ethan's on the run, of course. And now we've kind of skipped ahead some time. Uh, they don't really tell you how much time they skipped ahead. And basically, Ethan's got a full grown beard. He's all working out, and the CIA is trying to take him down. So the CIA is trying to track him. But, of course, we're talking about Ethan Hunt here, folks, so you're not going to track him. He mean, th from the first one, these guys are designed to get away with stuff and to be master of disguise and to infiltrate all types of government. So, of course, the CIA over pompous thinks they're going to take him out. They're not taking him out. Ethan's 17 steps ahead of him. They're all the way in Brazil. He's in Paris chilling. CIA's lost. <laughs> so he's got other plans. So now we get to catch up with Benji. And we were wondering what happened to Benji because the first time we see him, he's on mission. Well, the next time we see him, he's sitting in some giant server room working back in the office. So he's been taken out the field again, and he don't look happy. He's sitting there bored out of his mind playing Xbox, just completely bored. 
he ends up getting some mysterious mail and he wins opera tickets, plane tickets and opera tickets to Vienna, Austria to see the opera. And he's all excited and can't believe it and is pumped. So he's got a good old smile on his face. And then he gets a call, of course. And if you come to find out that he basically goes to like a weekly polygraph from the CIA because they want to find out where Ethan is. And he hasn't communicated with Ethan since the whole thing went awry. And it doesn't make a difference because Alan Healy, he just keeps pushing it on him and figure, trying to figure out information. And Vinci's is like, look, I don't know where he is. <laughs> so that that happens and uh you you basically that that gets all to that point so the next time we catch up is benji catches up with uh, we catch up with benji and now he's in vienna and he's you know he's gonna go see this opera he's walking off the train at a station and he gets hit with a package and bam out of nowhere you got some uh some classic imf communication glasses that lets you communicate to other imf agents and also let you see what other imf agents are looking at i like how kingsman stole that that was that was smart because those are pretty sick you know we never got those google glasses kind of sucks but Whatever. So he starts communicating with Ethan. He's like, Ethan. He's like, yeah. He's like, uh, I brought you here, you know, because I need your help. He was like, I'm, I'm tracking this guy, and he's got a picture, and it's lame. And he has no idea who it is. He just knows he's for, with the syndicate. He's like, I need your help to figure it out. He goes, what are we doing here? He goes, well, Lane's here, and we're going to find out. So he goes, oh, I knew I didn't win those those uh, opera tickets. He goes, oh, sorry, man. So Bendy's in now, so they're working together. So Benji starts to go up to the uh, opera, and out of nowhere, out pulling up to the opera is actually the chancellor of Vienna. And he's the, I'm, I'm assuming, the uh, the president of theirs. They call it the chancellor, I'm assuming. The president of Vienna, Austria, is at this um, opera. So the opera starts to go on, and, of course, it's a hit. It's a multi-hit. The syndicate has sent out multi-assassins to take out the chancellor of Austria. And one of these assassins is Elsa. So Ethan spots that it's going to be a hit, tries to take out one of the members of these different ones, but he doesn't realize there's actually three different gunmen. So he takes out one, gets into a crazy battle, but Rebecca Ferguson's character, Elsie, she ends up shooting the Chancellor and almost shooting Benji while he's trying to take out another one of the assassins, but the Chancellor's not dead. The Chancellor actually gets away with just a flesh wound, and he was kind of confused because she's working for the Syndicate, but no, she's not. She's actually a double agent, so she was trying to take the shot so he could get away. So all pandemonium ensues because now the Chancellor of Austria has been shot at this, at this opera. They shut down the opera and they're closing in all the doors because they don't want no one to get out because they're trying to figure out what the heck just happened. At the same time, Elsie's trying to get out and so is Ethan because they're not supposed to be there. They run into it. Well, Ethan purposely runs into Elsie and then they end up getting out together. They do this cool little thing. They kind of, he throws a rope and kind of slides down from the top of a, a flagpole, which is really cool. And then the minute they get down and they think everything's good, they cut to a seat. They cut to the chancellor and he's inside of this van or this vehicle driving past him and inside of this case it explodes and he ends up dying anyways so all that work and still the chancellor ends up dying big old explosion happened benji rolls up picks them both up they start conversating ethan basically understands and knows that she's british intelligent because he helped her and they were trying to figure it out she's like we're both after the same thing She's like, you got to let me out. He's like, why? I'm not going to let you go. He's like, no, you got to let me go. You got to make this look like I got away. Like, you tried to take me. He's like, I got to play the part for the syndicate. And he's like, well, how do I find you? Don't worry. You have all the information. So she jumps out the car, ends up getting away, and Ethan and Benji go about their day. And I guess through all the different stuff they have, they find, like, this lipstick that's got a, a, a drive inside, actually. And it takes them to where she's actually located at, which is in Morocco. So they actually end up going to Morocco. But before... <clears throat> They get to Morocco. We actually get to um, we get to figure out. Uh, we find out about the CIA. The CIA has found out about this humongous incident that happened in Vienna, Austria, and now they know that Benji and Ethan will work together. So they're coming at them now full board, and they have first authority to shoot to kill on Ethan. So he's really now an enemy of the state and considered treason. So that's just gotten even worse. So. Benji and Ethan end up going to Morocco, meeting up with Elsie, and she's, when you get there, you don't know what she's doing, but she's underwater, and she's got this thing on there, and she's actually practicing for this big heist they're going to set up, and you have no idea what she's doing at first, so they kind of have a conversation, then it kicks over to Brant, and Brant has recruited Luther now, so you're trying to figure out what happened to Luther, well, Luther, when IMF was uh, shut down, he was going to get sent to CIA, he was like, nah, I'm done, I'm not, I don't work for the CIA, he resigns, Brant ends up staying, 
Bran tells Luther, look, I need you to help me find Ethan and Benji before the CIA does because they're going to kill him. And Luther's like, they ain't never going to find Ethan. He's like, no, they're going to kill him. Like, you know, Bran don't know him better. Luther's been around since one. Like, no one's finding Ethan. You're not catching Ethan. I don't know what's wrong with you. But, you know, he ain't listening. So they team up now, and they're going to go try to find Ethan and Benji. But, you know, Luther's smart. He's like, I'm not going to go look for him. I'm going to look for the woman. So he starts tracking Elsie. They track him to Morocco. So, of course, we're all going to be in Morocco at the same time. And what's Morocco? What's the heist of the movie, of course? Every Mission Impossible has got to have a heist. And this one, just like all the rest, has a crazy convoluted plan to do some crazy stuff to steal some information. So, what do we got to do with this one? Well, they got to replace this card inside of this vault that's underwater. And the easier way is to just walk across with uh you know a mask and thing but i guess the technology is so amazing that if you don't mimic the characteristics of the person you're wearing a mask of it doesn't work so benji of course doesn't get to wear a mask again he gets to play with it but he never wears it so it ends up where tom is gonna have to jump into some funnel that kicks him into this water that he's gonna be swirling around in this water vault and he has to open it up take this like yellow card take it out put this other yellow card in of course some crazy convoluted plan he has to come up with and then he's got this uh oxygen kind of like thing that protect gives him oxygen for like three minutes so he jumps in he switches out the card but in the process of switching out the card he gets knocked around messed you know it's it's a heist he's gonna get messed up and he actually ends up drowning in the middle after he completes it so what happens? Well, Elsie jumps in and saves him. While at the same time, Benji finishes everything he needs to do and gets the information. Um, the next time you cut to it, Elsie pulls uh, uh, Ethan out of the water and he's dead and, you know, re-brings him back to life with CPR and shocks him. Though. I mean, CPR brings him back to life and because he was he drowned, so now he's back to life. Benji shows up like, hey, I told you, oh, like, oh my God, maybe it was a little harder than I thought. He's like completely in shock because she, he, she saved Ethan, so now he kind of trusts her, but... He should have thought about that first hand, because the minute he turns his back to her, Elsie hits him with the defibrillator paddles and breaks out with the with the information that they stole. <laughs> so of course, all heists gotta continue with the chase. So Elsie's trying to break out and use the same car that she's got, but who's there? The syndicate's there waiting for her, because they know that she's there to steal the information. So they end up giving her a motorcycle, and you can see it's kind of weird. They're all getting on motorcycles. She's about to get on a motorcycle, and then out of nowhere, she ends up getting on her bike and taking her bike and knocking out the rest of all their bikes so they can't get away, and she books out. Ethan, of course, wakes up with Benji. They go running out. They get a car and starts a car and bike chase. So you got the syndicate chasing after all of them because they're trying to get the information. You got Ethan and Benji in a car trying to chase after Elsie because she's in a bike. And, of course, all craziness is happening at the same time. Luther and freaking uh, Brant show up, and they're chasing everybody around. So all kinds of pandemonium is going on. It's a big old chase. Ethan and Benji, of course, end up crashing, going over some stuff and crashing out. Uh, Ethan ends up finding a bike and turning it into, you know, he's got to get a motorcycle and chase after her in a motorcycle. He's got to go all uh, Mission Possible 2 right there. So he starts chasing after her, but he's got no helmet or nothing. They get into this wild motorcycle chase and ends up going around a corner. I guess she got so far ahead, she gets off her bike, stands in the middle of the road. He comes around the corner, sees her, and doesn't want to kill her, so he ends up crashing, and then she gets away. Of course, Ethan always got the sweet tooth for the girl. He he finds a pretty lady, and he and he and everything else just goes awry in his head. He he fell sucker to Claire in the first one, and the next one Naya got him all twisted up, and then he had his wife, and that really messed him up. And then the next one, his wife was gone. It was we you know he went crazy and ended up in a Russian jail killing people that were trying to kill his wife. I mean, this man just goes crazy when it comes to his women. <laughs> so you know he loses his mind. So he, he ends up, she ends up getting away, and she actually ends up taking back uh, the information to her boss, who you find out is the MI6 boss, who is actually, uh, what's his name? His name is Alent, 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 yes, Alent. I can never get that name right. Yes, so he ends up, uh, Atley, I'm sorry. He takes it to Atley. Elsie gets away and takes the information that she, they got from Morocco and takes it to the MI6 boss, Atley. Atley actually... What you come to find out is the whole reason for this thing. Atlee is actually the issue. He actually created the syndicate for the British government to use as a secret thing to take out their enemies. Well, it seems like the one he put in charge has gone against him. 
So when Atlee gets this information, he ends up wiping the drive that she doesn't even know because she ends up giving he ends up giving it back to her the information and tells her to take her to Lane so that she can still think that the syndicate she's still working for the syndicate. But he wipes the information. And you're asking what's in this? Well, I guess what they find out and what the uh, the rest of the guys find out because once uh, Elsie gets away, you got Luther, Benji, Brant, and Ethan, the, the, the four horsemen all back together again, and they're arguing, and they're trying to figure out what the heck to do and how the f heck they're going to get this information. They, they're just trying to figure out what's going on. Basically, they find out it's a red box, and what we find out a red box is is a red box is a confidential virtual box of information that the British government uses to transport back and forth. The weird thing is why would this box be sitting in Morocco when it's British intelligence? Well, that's what they're trying to figure out. So they end up getting into a huge argument, figuring out what they want to do. They figure out a way that they're going to track Elsie to get to Lane. So they track Elsie to some train station that I guess, uh, you know, they track her to some area and set up a meet. Before all this goes down, Elsie meets back up with Lane, gives him the information, but he finds out it's all the, the thing has been wiped, so it's no good to him. So there's a lot of double back and forth in this whole thing, of course. So they set up a meet. They're all there to meet with Elsie, and you know she's trying to convince Ethan to run away with her, and Luther's getting all scared, and they're just trying to get the information because he knows Luther knows that he's he's very uh, he he gets tricked by the women, so he's nervous. But at the same time, Lane ends up using all this as a distraction, and he ends up stealing Benji. So he takes Benji for what everything that's going on, and now all pandemonium is breaking loose because Lane. Lane gets away with Benji and basically tells Ethan, look, you're going to bring me that red box for Benji and we're going to do an even swap. So now, Ethan has to figure out a way to steal the Prime Minister because only the Prime Minister can open up. So Brand, at this point, what you think, is not on board for this. He ends up calling Alan Huey, the CIA director, and telling him that he's got Ethan. But what we find out is this is all part of a big elaborate plan. So we're back in England. And we're all ready for this big event, this big final confrontation to happen. So we're back in England, and you got Brant there, and he meets up with Alan Healy, the uh, director of CIA, and then he ends up seeing uh, Atlan, the the director of MI6, and they actually actually have a conversation, and he tells he, Healy tells uh, <laughs> Alan tells Atlan that Ethan, that all these A's and E's and. Blah, 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 tells that Atlan that Ethan has a plot to get the Prime Minister and to open this virtual red box and then he needs to warn the Prime Minister. So what of course happens? We get this little secret meeting in a room where you got the Prime Minister being spoken to by Atlan, his MI6 director, you have the CIA director, and then you have Brent in the background. And basically they come to tell him that, you know, that Ethan has got this plot to, to get to him. And he's like, why would Ethan want to get to him? And uh, Brent starts talking in the background like, look, We've been tracking the syndicate, and we think that the syndicate actually has a plot to get to hold of this red box. And this is when the prime minister clicks up, like, syndicate? He looks at Atlan. He's like, are we talking about the same syndicate? And you can see the director of CIA, Alan, like, what the heck is going on? So what you find out? Atlan is the one who created this, this whole syndicate thing, and he's been trying to cover up this whole time because the prime minister said, I don't want anything to do with that. And what's in that red box? Well, what's in that red box is 2.5 billion pounds of untraceable funds that the syndicate can use for whatever they want. So basically, you're going to give a terrorist organization almost all the money they need possible to just wreck shop and act crazy around this world. And then they can collect even more money because they're a dark, web organization that would just take out systematically all the leaders and stuff. So that's all bad. This starts going bad, and you can see the CIA directors, everything starts to change. But it's all a trick. The actual Atlan that's in the meeting is Ethan, and he was trying to get all this information out of the Prime Minister so that the CIA director could see that it was the syndicate that did the whole thing and that Ethan had nothing to do with it. <sighs> Mission Impossible plot. Oh, we're trying to go crazy. <laughs> So what happens? They end up shooting the prime minister. He ends up telling the code. They open the box up. The real Atlan shows up. They shoot him. They get him to admit to the CIA director that he created the whole syndicate and he tried to frame Elsie for the whole thing and cover it all up. <sighs> you know, that whole fun thing. And so the CIA director sees all that and understands what's going on and tells him to go after it. So Lane and Ethan have a setup now because Ethan has opened up the box that's got the, the money in it to exchange it for Benji. They meet at some restaurant. Benji's got a bomb on him. 
So he has to give over the information to all this money. He gets the bomb off of Benji, and of course, we get our last and great chase. All right, so this sets up the last great chase. So you, they get the bomb off of Benji. Benji gets free, but Lane and his syndicate now have the red box and all the money they need. So this starts a chase. Ethan and Elsie chase after him. They end up figuring out a way to trick Lane, of course, and Ethan goes down this tunnel. Lane follows him, but actually it's this box that he puts him in, and it's like a clear plastic box, and they fill it up with gas, and they've caught Lane now. So they're super excited because they've caught now the leader of the syndicate. They've caught him so they can clear all their names, and, of course, everything goes great. So at the end, Elsie and Ethan are there, and Ethan tells her, I've cleared, you know, you're all clear now. You can go back to work, and she's like, okay, and it's just kind of like this mutual going about their day and then she goes about her thing and then we kick over to the uh the council again we have another council meeting and now alan is sitting there the director of cia is in there and basically tells the special council that this entire time that all this has been going on has just been a giant uh plot to flush out the syndicate and he had to go deep cover because no one would believe it so they're like you asking us to reinstate the imf and they ask brand brand is this the truth he goes I can neither confirm or deny without the secretary's thing. He basically says the same thing and at the end. They walk out with smiles. IMF is reinstated. And what happens? Alan is now the IMF secretary. So IMF is full back to full strength. And that only makes it great. Why? Because for uh, Mission Impossible Fallout, we're bringing back Christopher McCurry and everybody else. It's like part two of Rogue Nation. I'm super excited for this next one. Cannot wait. They even added freaking Angela Bassett and Harry Cavanaugh as CIA. Oh, man, this looks good. Woo! So there you go, folks. There's a complete breakdown of Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Like I said, I think part two is going to come out for Fallout, and I heard it's even better. So I cannot wait. I'm excited. As far as me, this one is actually my second favorite Mission Impossible behind number one. The first one is my favorite, Rogue Nation at number two, Mission Impossible 3 at number three, uh, and Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol at number four, and Mission Impossible 2 at number five, because that's just, you know, we don't talk about that. Woo! Well, there you go, folks. I hope you guys enjoy that complete breakdown. Uh, come back and check out my Mission Impossible Fallout review when it's all out. It should be out by this Monday. Until next time, folks. Good night, Ted.